in what they call an argument, an argument with a theory. Um, but when it comes down to the wisdom of God, which is godly wisdom, I don't care how much you argue with it. It's the facts and it's the truth. Because the Bible said, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. And so the word of God then becomes infallible. What he speaks, the word that God speaks, this is the scripture, that the word that God speaks, it does contain the power. It contains the power to bring forth deliverance and make you whole. That's the word that God speaks. So he says that I got the wisdom because I don't want you to get it confused with the kind of wisdom that I'm talking about. I'm talking about godly wisdom. And, and, and so wisdom now, the godly wisdom is introducing itself to us today. The godly wisdom is trying to help us to understand um, its nature, its character, what it comes to do, and its ability. It says, I godly wisdom reside with prudence, good judgment, moral courage, and astute common sense and I find knowledge and discretion when he says that I godly godly knowledge I reside which means I don't visit there I live there I take up my abode there it is my residence it is my place that I have paid a price to possess that land and so I reside there I live there and he said, but I reside with prudence. And let's, let's go to that because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see this. You gotta see this. He said, I reside with prudence, prudence, prudence. When you look up that word prudence and you, and you dissect the word, um, hold on a second. Yeah, there it is. It says, it is the quality of being prudent and it is the quality of exercising prudence. But then when you go to the word prudent, it said it's the acting with or the showing care and thought for the future. It is the acting with or showing care and thought for the future, which means when we're looking for the wisdom of God for our projects, when we're looking for the wisdom of God as it relates to our our, our, our goals and things that we have before the Lord in prayer and the plans that's on your paper. He said, you will not get the godly wisdom if you're not a person that is trying to care for what is in the future. See, that's what Ms. Miko was talking about last yesterday, how you got to let stuff go and you cannot harbor those things from back there. Because if you do, you would always be a person that would be sitting in confusion. You will always be an individual that would be in constant bewilderment about which way to go and which direction should I go in. And you're all over the place because you don't have godly wisdom. Because why? Because godly wisdom, it does not dwell or reside or live in the past. That's not where it takes up residence. So you will always be searching for it. You will always be in search for wisdom, but the people that takes up a care for the future, for my future, for my prophecy, for what the Lord has prophesied over my life, I will bump into wisdom all the time. <laughs> I don't have to search for it. It's already sitting there waiting for me to get there. Are you hearing that? Now that was good right there. God, I appreciate that word right there. Good God have mercy. No, you don't have to search for wisdom. It wisdom is already sitting in your future. It is already sitting in your future. I don't have to search for good judgment because good judgment is in my future. I don't have to search for moral courage. I don't have to. In, in other words, I don't have to chase. I don't have to chase my flesh to make sure that it does what God wants it to do. If I care enough about my plans, if I care enough about my future and I put my mind there, it is the prudence that is in my life that will begin to become the chastity belt for the activity of my flesh. In other words, it is the prudence and my care 
for my future and me warring after my prophecy that's going to tell me to go somewhere and sit down. And you're not going to do that. And you're not going to act like that. And you're not going to choose that as your course. Because I got to stay on course because none of those things involves my future. All of those things become a distraction. And if I get off course and I start doing a lot of crazy, ungodly things, then I am headed back to the nature of my past. I am allowing my own nature to pull me back in old ways. See, now we're getting ready to get a revelation right here. That's the reason why the enemy fights some of us so bad about trying to pull you back to your old ways. That's why you have to be careful because what the enemy is doing is he's not trying to pull you back into smoking and drinking and cussing and carrying on all of what you're trying to do. He's trying to really pull you away from prudence because if I get them away from prudence, they would never have wisdom. And if they never have wisdom, they will always live their life as a frustrated Christian. Good Lord have mercy. I just said something right there. Did, did somebody see? Thank you. Thank you. Car Carla, Carla said teach. Janika said teach. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? So then let me ask you a question. So is the temptation really for your flesh or is the temptation an attack on your future? Think about that. Is the temptation really the enemy got your flesh all out of whack and saying, oh, I got the can't help it. And I'm just going to do it one more time. And, oh, God, I know. Is it really, really, really that he's trying to give you a thrill in your flesh? Or is the devil really trying to rob you of prudence? Is he trying to really rob you of wisdom? Because he know if you have a tap wisdom, the wealth of the world is going to be set in your hands. Oh, God, I know what I'm talking about. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? This thing is, this thing is, this thing right here is, this right here is no joke. It's no joke. That's why the scripture said, now watch this, watch this. Let's go to this. Let's go to this. It says, it says common sense and it find knowledge. It fi look, 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 good judgment, moral courage and astute common sense, astute common sense. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Astute common sense. When I care for my future, when my concern and my love and my passion becomes what it is I want to accomplish in my future, then what I have is astute common sense. I just don't have common sense. I have astute common sense, which means I, I have the ability. It's the ability of showing an ability to accurately assess situations or people and turn this to one's advantage. Did y'all hear that? I want to throw my phone. I want to throw my glasses. I want to throw something right now. Did you just hear that? Did you just hear that? That's what he's trying to rob you of. The enemy is trying to rob you of your ability to accurately assess a situation or people and turn this situation to your advantage. That's what prudence help you to do. That's what a person that's caring for their future, just like the other day. I'll give you a perfect example. I live by example. I'm not going to teach something and I haven't walked in it. I live by example. The other day when um, the program got snatched down because my passion is for at three with me, because my passion is me doing what God has called me to do as it relates to this Facebook live page and wherever you're watching from, because this is my passion. Nobody pays me to sit here. I don't get a check for doing this. I do it because I have a passion for the people that I'm talking to. I have a passion for you. I have a passion that you would, that you would learn the ways of God and how you can incorporate that into your everyday life. And so it's my passion. And because it was my passion and my mindset is for the future of this program. When they snatched it down, that didn't make me want to quit. Automatically, I was able to grab a hold to astute common sense. And I was able to assess the situation, bring a resolve to it, and then create a whole nother avenue on this show that did not even exist before they snatched it down. It's because of prudence 
Prudence gave me an opportunity not to get in my flesh and just be mad about it. But prudence gave me an opportunity to operate in astute common sense. And so what did I do? I allowed God to use wisdom. I bumped into wisdom and I allowed wisdom to allow me to embrace astute common sense. And it was astute common sense that allowed me to turn that mishap into something that was to all of our advantage. My God from Zion. Do y'all see that? You can't lose your head with stuff. You can't lose your head with stuff. The minute something starts happening, the first place you go is to the negative place. Oh, well that, I might work quick. That this must mean that that ain't my music ain't that. that. Cause you, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Some of you all sent me some music, and I'm gonna give you. I, now you know I gotta keep it 100. Gotta keep it 100. Now I can't be I can't be only faking with you. Can't be only telling you something that ain't the truth. Okay. All right. Come on. Let 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 mama be helping some of y'all. Some of y'all sent me some music, and it was great songs. And you had a great voice. You're just going off a little bit, you know, just a little bit here and there, just off the note. Got that part. But that didn't make me look at the whole project and say, well, this ain't no good. No, that made me say, you know what? Let's see if we can tweak this a little bit. Now, I didn't do that to none of the songs I done played already. So I don't want you all to think I tweaked, you know, uh, Sylvia's music or tweaked Trina's music. I didn't have to touch it. I played it as is. So when I got it, it was right. But. The point that I'm trying to make is that I can give somebody that as an advice and they can get all bent out of shape. I might as well just quit. Forget it. Rather than just taking the wisdom and saying, well, let me go back and fix this. Because Dr. Bynum did say it was a great song. What have I tried to tell you? I'm telling you this about your plans, about your future. If it has not already come to pass, it's because there is something about it that God still wants to perfect. There's something about it that God wants you to take a second look at it to see what it is you need to correct. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that, you have to keep yourself in a place where you go after prudence. You got to keep your mind in your future, in, in your future, in your future. And, 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 and watch this, watch this, watch this. This thing is crazy. It, it, it said the ability to accurately assess situation or people, the ability to even assess people and turn it to your advantage. Now watch this. I want to show you something right quick in this scripture. It says here, and to find I wisdom, I do that for you. You ain't got to look for it. It says I wisdom, I find knowledge. And I find knowledge and discretion, which means I'm discreet in the way that I dispel to you information. That's powerful right there. That's powerful right there. Wow. Wow. The true wisdom would not embarrass you because I'm the godly knowledge. I'm going to do it in a way that is going to be so discreet that I'm going to increase your ability and your common sense to assess your situations and turn it around to your advantage. Is that good, y'all? Oh, my God. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody getting that. Somebody getting that. Somebody, somebody, somebody getting that. And, and, and see, some of y'all going to say this. Let me, let me, let me, let me bring some correction to this, too. Because, you know, some of y'all say, well, you know what, Dr. Bynum, I just, I just gave up because I, I just lost my faith. Cause we, we, I mean, we talking to people on this, on this Facebook page. I've lost my faith. I, you know, I just don't have the faith that I used to. And then I just kept trying, 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 and you just don't seem like it's going to come to pass. It don't like it's going to ever happen. And so I just gave up. Well, 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 let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. And I want to, I want to bring this real, real clear to you. You that are watching right now, you are not a faithless person. You're not a faithless person. Well, I, I don't really have a whole lot of faith. Let me tell you something. This, now, this is the revelation right here that God shared with us yesterday that, that, that took us out of here, for real. How do I know that you have faith? And how do I know that you have what it takes to hold on to your vision and hold on to your family and hold on to whatever you believe in God for? Have you ever realized, and we're going back to what Ms. Miko said yesterday, 
Do you not know the years that people spend hating people and holding on the stuff that people done did to you? And I'm talking about you won't let it go. I, I'm talking about you won't let it go. I mean, years done passed. Have you ever wondered why? When you, when you really hate somebody and you really don't like somebody or you offended by somebody and you got something against them and you absolutely can't stand them. Have you ever wondered why you know everything about their family? I mean, like you and Ray Ray broke up five years ago, but you know all his girlfriends, who, what they look like, where she get her hair done. And, and my girlfriend of a girlfriend that do her hair, that do my hair, told me that underneath her weave, she ain't even got no hair. So Ray Ray dating somebody that's bald headed anyway. And I don't care. And have did she knock me? Have you seen all them dimples that she be trying to wear? Smash? You know everything about the people that you hate. And you don't stop getting information. You listen, you don't stop getting information. You gonna know everything there is to know about them. They kids got nappy hair. Her son got buck teeth and that ain't even Ray Ray's baby. He don't even know that I know a girl that told me that her brother is her brother's child. He looked just like him. We know every detail about somebody. We do our research when we hate somebody. When we don't like somebody, baby, we listen, we pay people. We bless people. We take people out to lunch just so we can learn something else about them. That's how hard our faith is. But you know what that is? That's perverted faith. That's you believing in something so strong that you can hold on to it. And guess what? You don't need nobody to prophesy to you. You don't need nobody to encourage you. You don't need nobody to bring you a word so you can keep on holding on to that hate. That's, listen, we, we treat God unfair, y'all. We treat God unfair because when somebody don't like somebody, we are hyped about it. As a matter of fact, we on the bus and see them and say, guess who I saw? We can't wait to pick up the cell phone to call somebody and say, guess who I saw? I saw Ray Ray girl friend. Her hair wasn't even done. She had some old nasty scarf on her head. And guess what? The enemy will always make sure that he keep on bringing you stuff about Ray Ray because why? He wants to keep his, his, his ability for you to believe in hatred and unforgiveness alive. So the devil going to prop stuff up around you all the time to make sure you get hyped and go, yes, she had an accident. Yes, they broke their leg. Yes, their house burned down. That's what they get anyhow. Are you hearing me? Are y'all hearing God? So don't ever tell me that you don't have faith. You got it. It's just perverted faith. And that's why the devil mess with you all the time about unforgiveness because he know if you ever start believing God the way you believe uh, when somebody done did you wrong, you, my brothers and my sisters, will be billionaires. I just preach right there. I can go off the air right now. I can just shut this show down. I know I'm telling the truth right there. You don't need nobody to come bring you a prophecy saying, I keep on hating now. I want you to be encouraged to hate. I want you to be encouraged to dislike her. I want you to be encouraged to hate your baby mama drama. Cause, um, hate him. Hate him with everything you got. I mean, wish that done nothing. Never go right with him, his girlfriend, his kids, his mama. And, mm -mm, just, just be, you don't never have to have a prophetic word for stuff like that. But we make God prophesy to us 99 times a day because it takes all of that to keep us believing in something that is going to prosper us. And it takes none of that to make us keep believing in something that's going to do nothing but cause you to bust hell wide open, hating and unforgiving. My God, y'all, y'all got the wrong one because, you know, I'm OK. I'm going I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm going to give you truth. That's how I know you got faith. And that's how I know the depth of your faith. That's how I know you got the ability to hold on to stuff because you hold on to stuff anyway. Let the church say amen. Y'all don't want to say amen today. Uh, where's all my bummer bees now? I don't see no bummer bees up here right now. Mm -mm, I don't see no bummer bees. I don't see no bummer bees up here. I see Jesus. I see my God. Uh, uh, I, 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 Tasha said, now you just broke that down. Tasha, am I? Tasha, call me right now, 866-798-4490. Tasha, call, Tasha Mays, Tasha Mays, call, call this number right now. Because, see, I, I just need a witness today. I need a witness today. Are y'all hearing that? I need a witness today. Don't tell me you don't have faith. Don't tell me you don't have faith. 
as many years as you have disliked an individual, you could have been holding on to your faith that long because that's how strong you are. You're not as weak as you think you are. That's how strong you are. But guess where your strength come from? Your strength come from where your real passion is. So you mean to tell me you got somebody else's offensive making you have more passion than your own life? You got more passion to hate and unforgive and walk in unforgiveness more than you do your own future? No, today we got to reverse that. Today we got to bind the spirit of perverted faith. We just located the devil. We just found him. Uh-huh. Wisdom just found him. We found where he hiding that. Uh-huh. That's why. And watch this. When you get through hating like that, you get through unforgiving. You get through being all strong about all of that over there. Do you know what end up happening? When it's time for you to believe for your own vision, you out of strength. I just said something right there. The Holy Ghost just spoke a word right there. The Holy Ghost just spoke a word. Tasha Mays, I'm waiting on you to call 866-798. 4490 866-798-4490. Let me see who else in here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Alec Dare said, wow, we had faith all this time. Uh-huh. To be passionate in the wrong area. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Don't ever tell somebody you ain't got no faith. And what the devil is doing is he is monopolizing on your faith. He's a manipulator. And because he know he can't give you faith. And he know that it is God that gives you faith. Then that seed is planted in you to automatically believe from God. And now his job is to pervert that. And his job is to send your faith in the opposite direction. And while you over here, you're not involved in your future. You in your past because whatever happened to you, it's over. Whatever happened to you, that was yesterday. Do you know where I would be today if I walked around hating all the people that did something to me? I would be a mess. Do you know where I would be today if I was hating everybody? No, I wish everybody God speed. I wish that on my ex-husband. I wish that this would be the marriage that God would use to glorify the kingdom. I don't have a reason to hate. None. Because all things work together for the good to them that love God. To those that are called according to his purpose. I'm called according to his purpose. So whatever I went through, it was for the good. And not only my good, but your good. Because if that had never happened to me, I wouldn't have a reason to be sitting on this floor talking to none of y'all. I'm just being straight up honest with you. Wouldn't have a need. Wouldn't have a need to feel that kind of level of passion. I've always had a passion for souls. But now I got a passion for people in pain. I got a passion for people who can't get on with their lives. And that's my job now. My job is to make sure that nobody continues to live their life in that kind of hurt and that kind of pain. You're going to have to work at it, but it's doable. Getting through it is doable. Getting over it is doable. Getting over what people have done to you is doable. And now that I'm where I am right now, and I look back on all of that, all of those people that offended me, they sat in that area, but they couldn't have ever sat in my future. Because just because somebody is in your now doesn't necessarily mean that they belong in your tomorrow. And so some things God allows to happen so the Lord can put you in your next level. And my next level was not to go to the next platform. My next level was to sit down on this floor and come eye to eye with you to let you know that you cannot continue in perverted faith. You cannot continue to allow the enemy to take possession of something that belongs to your future. Is he preaching today? He is. She on the phone. Go ahead, sweetheart. How you doing? I'm great, Dr. Bynum. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just saw your remark that says, wow, you teaching. What did, what did you hear in that just do for you? You know what, Dr. Bynum? It's like when it comes to faith, you know, just like you say, we, we want God to prophesy. We want God to confirm, to bring confirmation. Time after time, we just do God wrong. But yet, when we was out in the world, and like you said, we knew what, when when that man did us wrong, we knew about family, we knew about baby mama, we knew about everything. But it was a perverted faith. That's right. So it just, it just showed me, I have faith. God wow. does not have to jump through all the hoops to show me, to say it time after time, 
He said it one time, and we need to go forward. We don't need to keep trying to let God prove something to us. But yet the devil was able, he was able, you know, to make us believe all this negative stuff. That's right. All of this perverted stuff. You know, so I just, I just, it just came to me clear once you said that I have the faith. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know yes. what? You you going to get the first happy B-Day cup today. You I, I don't yes. <laughs> Where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Sarasota, Florida, right by Tampa, Florida. Oh, right by Tampa, Florida. My goodness. Well, you know what? You just yes. blessed me, Tasha. You getting ready to get the first coffee cup, the, the very first Thank one you. that came out the box. So I want you to dial the number back. A matter of fact, I'll, I'll give her your phone. Dial the number back. And this time when she answered, it won't be on the air. And so they can take down your, your phone number and your address so we can get your cup out. Out to you and thank you so much for receiving thank that you, word God, Divine, I love you I love you too sweetheart and I mean do y'all hear God. that people of God people of God do y'all do y'all hear what God trying to say to us today and I'm telling you you got faith you got faith the enemy has just infringed upon your faith the enemy has just taken over he just took your plate from you that's like you, you like like you eating a good meal and the devil just walk up and just take your meal no, you're not going to do us like that. We done located you. Mother Boyd used to say, you got to locate the devil. We done located you. The bloodhounds of Jesus done snuffed you out. And you are not going to continue to deceive the people of God. We're not having it. If you, can, if, 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 if you got enough gumption to believe, and I'm talking about, we strong about it too. Oh, don't, do not get somebody not liking somebody. You can't even mention their name. You, I mean, you walk into a store and see somebody with the name Ray Ray and some guy working in a grocery store, Ray Ray. Yeah, I don't want him bagging my bags. I don't want him touching my bags. Anybody with the name Ray Ray can't do nothing for me. You change and go to the next counter. You don't want nobody with the name Ray Ray talking to you. Ain't that something? Y'all know we act like that. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know I'm speaking the truth today. You do know I'm speaking the truth today. I, 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 all the Ray Ray, and then let the boy go to bag something, and, and, and he drop a jar of pickles. See, that's what I'm talking about. All Ray Rays, everything they touch, they just destroy everything. Now, everybody in the whole wide world with the name Ray Ray just ain't no good. That's how, that's how we are. They just, just, they just that, you, anybody that got the name Ray Ray, they, they don't know how to, everything they touch, God done already told me he going to destroy. God told you that. God told you that. And you got the nerve to prophesy that and speak that. But when it come down to your own vision, it's can somebody pray for me because I just been waiting on God for a long time and it doesn't seem like God going to do it. And I'm just tired of waiting. Y'all go figure. We need to stop playing. We really need to stop playing. We don't need to be doing God like that. That offends the Lord. He said, that's the faith that I gave you. Do y'all hear me? He said, I gave you that faith. I gave you all of what you believe in right now. I did that. I gave you the ability to believe. I put a spirit in you that caused you to believe. I did that for you. And I gave you that as a gift. It was your gift. That didn't belong to the devil. That was your present from God. That's just like taking, that's just like Tasha. Me sending Tasha this coffee cup. And she take a precious gift that I gave her. And just tell somebody, oh, you can take that, you can have it. That would offend me. Because I gave that out of my heart. And God gave you the ability to believe out of his heart. He, listen, he gave you his heart. That's how you alive. That's how you was called in the purpose. That's how God was able to take your life and protect it and keep the enemy from destroying you. Because he gave you his heart. He took out of you the heart of stone. But the devil wants to keep pulling you back in the past. 
He want to keep pulling you back. Not because you could feel angry. But he's after your spot in faith. He wants to pervert your faith. It's not about I fell in my flesh. He's after your prudence. He wants your future. And so what would he do? He would give you what the old people used to call a, a sugar tit. He'll give you a pacifier. And he'll let you see just enough about your future to keep you excited. But he won't give you enough about it for you to pursue it. And so you always weighed in the balance and found wanting. You always a person that's needing something. You always a person that's got all of these great ideas from God and can't make none of them work. And you're wondering today, why is it not working, Dr. Bynum? Why am I not seeing my vision come to pass in a greater way, in a quicker way? Because the devil got your faith. Because the enemy has taken the most precious gift that God could ever give you. And that's a gift to believe God. The gift to hear. The gift of discernment. And he's perverted that gift. And got you discerning what Ray Ray and them doing. Got you talking about I picked up in my spirit. I knew I, I, I was going to see his girlfriend today. I sensed it. You can sense all of that foolishness. Because as long as your purified faith, your purified discernment is tainted in the wrong direction, you will always be a person that only gets part of it, but you will never be a person that walk in all of it. Are you hearing God today? I don't know about y'all, but I hear him. got you watching the day because it's your turn and your time. You on God's mind. You really are. He's thinking about you. And he's saying it's time. The time for everything that he promised you to come to pass. I believe that. No more perverted faith. If I'm going to believe something, I'm not going to take the faith of God and give it to the devil to use. Now, I just said something right there. I'm not going to take the faith of God and give it to the devil to use as his instrument. If I can keep myself encouraged, to make sure that Ray Ray don't ever forget that he cheated on me. And he got another baby the same age as my baby. If you can make yourself be so encouraged to be determined not to ever let somebody forget what they did to you then guess what? Guess what? That's proof right there that you got the ability to encourage yourself. Because some things that some of you all are feeling don't nobody even know it. Some things you're going through, you pretending like you're over it, but you're not. And as long as that's got you and that's got your passion, and can I tell you what you're doing? And I, I don't, I don't, 
I don't know why he's ministering this strong about this. Can I tell you what you're doing? You're taking that and you're throwing. It's like taking the past and throwing it in your future. And the reason why you, the devil keep making sure that you see that stuff. Do you not know when I don't forgive people, when I forgive people, I don't even see them. I don't even see them. Some of them I haven't seen in years. And I'm talking about years. Years, six years or better. You know why? Because when you don't take the pass and you make the pass, every time you reach back there and get it, you make it be your future. And so what you just did, you just took the pass and throwed it in your future. So every time you walk forward, you keep bumping into everybody. You keep running into the same offenses. You keep running into the same hurt. But when you leave it back there and you start going after your future, you don't run into that foolishness. And by the time God really lets you see it, it's like water on a duck's back. You feel nothing because that's not my future. That was my past. And that's not my focus. That's not my focus. My future is. I'm going to continue this tomorrow. We're starting to make Wednesdays free download day. You go to the website, www.juanitabottom.com. We're making Wednesdays free download days where every Wednesday I'm going to give you a free download of a message. And today is Wednesday and it's free download day. So you can go to www.juanitabinum.com and get your free download of your message. Because I just don't want to just put it out here like this. I just I want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can think of that God can give me to make sure that you're changed and you're blessed. Also, I want you to be a part of the emergency revival. If you live in the Little Rock, Arkansas area, I'm going to be coming to Little Rock. The 11th, I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you can put that one back up. Going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, look forward to seeing you there on September the 11th with Danielle. Is it going back up? Okay, with Danielle. It, it's, a, it's a delayed uh, effect. Um, we're going to be with uh, Danielle. Uh, there it is, right there. Where it is, the 911 State of Emergency Women's Conference. And you don't want to miss this conference. It's going to be awesome. A young woman have an awesome testimony. You've seen her videos on Facebook, um, Rapture Ready, uh, powerful, powerful ministry. I'm going to be ministering in that conference that Sunday night on September the 11th. And then that Monday and Tuesday, I would be in Cleveland, Ohio for the TCT Praise-a-thon. So if you're in that area, you can meet me live in the studio for the TCT Praise-a-thon. I'm telling you, God is doing some awesome things. And I want you to get prepared and, and get ready for change because God, God is serious. He's serious about your life. And um, everything that God is doing in this hour, people of God, it is absolutely intentional. It's intentional. And all over, wherever you're looking from, wherever you're watching from, I want you to understand something that I sit here and I do what I do on a daily base because I care about you. I care about you. And I want God to do something awesome in your life. I don't just want this to be just something that you just watch as a side show. I want to feel like your life is being changed for real and that I'm making a difference in your life because that's what I intend to do, my God. Well, I bumble B hat. 
is going out to Nina Moore. Nina Moore. Nina Moore lost almost 40 pounds on the 21 day challenge. So this hat is going out to Nina Moore. Congratulations. Congratulations, Nina. You, you, you persevered and you didn't stop. And I want you to know that I appreciate you and we're back on it. So those of you that didn't lose all of what you wanted to lose, I told you I had 19 pounds to go. And right now I'm at, right at seven pounds lost. So I have a little ways to go. And so I want you to keep going and we're going to keep going and I'm not going to stop until I get to my goal. So we got to go now. Nina, Nina, Nina. Also, um, I'm looking for the screen. So I guess, are we on or still off? Okay. I'm looking for the screen because I usually have a screen up here telling me. Um, yes, here it is. So I can see, see names. Somebody on here. Yes. Yes. Millicent Phillips, I want you to keep going. She says she has 20 more pounds to lose. Yes. 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 And I want some of you all to put your pictures up. Some of you all have little things up like, you know, newspapers and cartoons. I want to see who I'm talking to. I, I, you know, even if I decide to give a hat or a coffee cup, I don't want to give it to a cartoon in a newspaper. I want to give it to a real life person. So I want you to do that. Um, God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. Uh, let me see. Yes, Margaret, I want you to join the 21 day challenge. I want you to join. Um, my life being changed. Wow, wow. Catherine Burks, Catherine Burks. She said, you're making a difference in my life and my life is being changed. Catherine Burks, I need you to email us at three with me and I want you to put in the subject bar, coffee cup. I wanna send you out a coffee cup. You're one of the winners of a coffee cup today because people, that's all I need. That's all I need. I don't want to sit here and just, you know, say, can you send me $10? Can you send me $20? Mm -mm. The reward for me sitting here is when people say, you have changed my life. And my life is changing because of the word that's being taught on this broadcast. Well, I got to go. I got to go. I gotta go. I'm going out with this one today. I'm sorry. Let me see who we're looking at. Oh, I want to tell you that your books have been shipped. And um, I told you the books are going fast. And so we had to place another order. So some of you that had not gotten your books, there's 20 of you. Your books are going out two day priority. So you will get them. And that's from the group that was waiting for the reorder to come back in, but everybody's book is going out today. And I appreciate your patience for waiting on your book. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to start that lesson. So you don't want to wait till the last minute. And this is a great week for you to order your book. You go online at www.juanitabynum.com and you can order it online, or you can pick up the phone and call 866-942-9686 and order your copy. We're getting ready to go through that book and it is going to bless you. The revelations that God has given me to add to what's already there is going to be phenomenal. So pick up the phone now. We only have a little short time left. Um, Today is the 10th and we're headed down. We're starting to teach. We're going to start teaching on that the last Monday of this uh, particular month. So that's going to be August the 20, August the 30th, we're going to start teaching this book on August the 30th, August the 20th, hold on a minute, let me just, I'm scrolling down here, yeah, okay, there it is right there, yes, yes, 
So you got time to order it because I want to start this teach because we got the Bring Back the Glory conference coming up and uh, all seats are free. The hotel reservations is on the website and we're going to be going through that book. Why? Because many of you have made a decision to attend that conference, Bring Back the Glory Now. And when you get in that building, I want you to know what you're doing. I don't want you to get in that building and you fumbling and, you know, the presence of the Lord is there and the glory of the Lord is there. And, uh, you know, God opens up those moments and those portals in the spirit where the miraculous drops in the room. And I don't want you stammering on how am I going to pray and uh, am, am I praying right? Am I doing it right? I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. And many of you that are watching, I want you to make plans, you know, get in cars with girlfriends, share the room. But you need to be at the Bring Back the Glory conference now. It's not going to be a joke. We're going after the presence of the Lord. Uh, uh, Bree Babado is going to be there. Um, the girl that sings, I'll be the one. Jeffrey Golden is going to be there. The one whose record I played yesterday about the Lamb of God. Uh, Glory to the Lamb. Persia Hilliard is going to be there. And she's coming out with, 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 with new music. I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. And yours truly. And, and Bishop Husband, who is an expert on the power of praying through. This is going to be a awesome, awesome, awesome conference and you don't want to miss it. So prepare yourself to do that. And until then, you go with God. I'll see you tomorrow at three with me. I'm looking one more time. Oh, yes. 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 Fanny Mac. I just chose you for the next coffee cup. I wanted to give out several today. Fanny Mac, she said, three works for me. That just kind of got me right there. Three, and she put all these bumblebees up. So I want you all to know I love you. And I'm telling you, God is good. Have a blessed day. And until then, I'll see you tomorrow at three with me. This is what I want you to go out listening to. It's available on iTunes on Friday. I know you can afford 99 cents. You need to download it. Yeah.